So yeah, I'm John McDonald. I am a bread baker at Weaver Street Market in Carboro, um, uh, in Carboro and Hillsboro, um, just down the way. And um, I'm also a worker owner, and I'm a member of the board of directors. And when Mark asked me to think about courageous leadership, um, I sort of thought of it in terms of those three roles, being a baker, a worker owner, and a board member. And so it's, that's sort of how I'm going to kind of frame the way that I'm thinking about it. Um, and the other thing, the other first thing that came to mind was that um, it seems like to me one of the most important things about leadership in general is encouraging, um, encu encouraging and creating an environment that fosters um, collaboration between um, members of a team. And so um, to begin thinking about that, um, I'm going to describe a little bit to you the, just, you know, my, my day to day existence in the bread bakery. Um, we have a team of 14 people, including um, our manager, and um, we process about 1,500 to 2,000 pounds of dough a day. Um, and we start at 2 a.m., and there's someone there until usually around 3.30 p.m. And, um, but most of the action happens between like 2 and 9 in the morning. And there's usually seven or eight people there. Um, in, and there are defined roles. There's someone mixing dough. There's a group of people shaping dough. There's people taking stuff out of the ovens, uh, packing stuff to, to, to go out to our different wholesale accounts and our stores. Um, but one of the things that, for me, has been so special about the bakery is that um, the, te the, the team works really well. We have something, um, there's something, there's a structural advantage to the way that we're set up that basically forces us to work together. Um, and uh, sort of related to that, you might have seen about a month ago, the New York Times did this big piece on um, with the workplace. And one section of that was there were some researchers at Google trying to figure out how to put together the best team. And what, and looking at, you know, Google's a very collaborative workplace, and looking at their different teams and looking at the successful ones and saying, okay, what's special about these that we don't have in the other ones, and how can we maybe scale that or sort of institute like policies to make that more normal? And um, what they found was they like couldn't find patterns. Like some teams were a bunch of experts, like the top of their fields, and they worked really well. But other places that had like rock stars were just like failing. And then other teams that just had like this hobnob group of people also uh, worked really well. Sometimes they had really strong individual leaders. Sometimes they were like a bunch of shy people that didn't talk a lot. Sometimes they hung out outside of work. Sometimes they were like complete strangers. Um, so they started doing these studies, and um, what they eventually sort of found out was that it wasn't so much like the makeup of your team, uh, the individual makeup of your team. Instead, it was the cultural norms and the like, sort of the the, the group norms of the team that mattered more. Um, and uh, two two things specifically that they were looking at, they called it um, teams that had high conversational turn taking. So basically, you know everyone spoke around the same amount of time, and teams that had um, an average social sensitivity, which is essentially like, I can like, see that you're feeling sad right now, or whatever. And the way that, that teams got that was that they knew each other. You know, they, they had stories about their lives. They um, knew their, their teammates' names, and, or uh, their teammates' like, kids' names, and things like that. And um, so to bring this back to the bakery, half of what we do is we stand around a table and we sort of tell jokes to each other while we shape dough, you know. And, um, and from that, there are a lot of cool stuff that's happened in the bakery. We've solved operational problems. We've figured out scheduling stuff. And um, so um, one, one thing that we are working on now is how can we take that and, um, and sort, of, sort of zero it in on specific problems that we have. And so on, on one example is product development. Um, you know, we pride ourselves in being what we think is the best bakery in North Carolina. And, but baker, you know, everything changes like what we're talking about today. And how can we um, continue to be the best bakery um, by, and there, in some ways there's two ways to do this. The way the food, serve, the food industry works, as most of us know, especially in the restaurant world, is you have one person who thinks that they're awesome and they tell a bunch of people what to do. And these people like slave a ton and try to become that person that then tells other people what to do. How can we be different? And how can we say, all right, we've got a master baker from Germany. We've got a guy who ran Google Hoof in Durham for 10 years. Um, we've got 
the guy who started Weaver Street Bakery 20 years ago. How can we create a create a um, a um, um, like a group norm where instead of one person deciding what we're doing, how can we all like collectively have uh, an open space where we can share ideas, where we can criticize each other in a safe way and come up with an even better idea for, you know, how are we going to have the best, you know, whole grain bread in North Carolina and sell more of, more of that than we do our, like, wonderful bread, as, as an example. Um, and then, um, so that's sort of one way I was thinking about leadership. And then um, one other piece is, as a worker owner, um, uh, I feel like you know we it's it's on a different level you know we own the business we have a responsibility to think about goals um, how to keep the business running how to compete in the marketplace and um, but I think you know Weaver Street um, is relatively large we have 250 people uh, 250 employees and um, I think it's fair to say that uh, a number of them you know do not are unable to connect their day to day work with our long term goals and um, so one you know, project that we've begun working on is Charles and I, the other worker and a representative, have begun meeting with Ruffin, our general manager, every week um, to sort of beta test like a little worker owner advisory board. And you know, what would that look like if we had representatives from each of our stores and the food house feeding into Ruffin? You know, this is my experience operationally, um, and Ruffin and, and the board members, you know, giving back, saying, you know, these are the broad goals. This is what we're thinking about. How does that, you know, how do you think that will fly in your departments? Um, and then final piece, like as a board member, how do you set those goals that are aspirational, that say, you know, that look 10, 15 years into the distance and say, this is how we're going to change the world. Um, you know, how do, we, how do we make that, how do we design those in a way that um, everyone from Ruffin down to the dishwasher can connect to those and be a leader in their own way and all sort of collectively move the business forward. So that's sort of how I was uh, thinking about the idea. John, way to go. Nice.